Good evening. We will call the board meeting to order. Uh, would the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Gus. Here. Trustee Jensen. Here. Trustee Miller. Here. Trustee Adderson. Here. Trustee Sittig. Here. Trustee Wells. Here. Attorney Magna. Here. Mayor Hooker. Here. And Chris McDonald is here. We have a quorum. There's okay. If you would all please uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Tonight our consent agenda includes the following, the approval of the minutes of the March 13th, 2014 board meeting, bills presented for payment in the amount of $145,352.72 in the February financial report is there anything that the board would like to have considered and, uh, separately? Anything that the public would like to have considered separately? I would accept a motion to approve the consent agenda. Oh, second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Adderson. Aye. Trustee Siddig. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. And Trustee Gus. Aye. Motion carries. Next item, looks like Trustee Wells has a full plate tonight, uh, Building and Zoning Committee. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have a number of uh, issues, uh, items that we've been, uh, the committee, uh, staff, and, um, and uh, our uh, planner have been working on for some time. Uh, first on that uh, list is a uh, consideration of the resolution approving uh, 2014 Fields of Beach Park zoning map. And primarily what that is basically just an uh, update of the zoning map uh, which would include map amendments for 38964 North Sheridan Road zoning change from B1 to B2 uh, the uh, Benito property uh, uh, 12581 12609 Eastwood Beach uh, Community Church and the Schultz property and basically this is just an annual update of the zoning map uh, those who've come into the fold and have. Oh, can't hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Right okay, there. all right. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, again, this is just an update that we do annually of uh, updating the zoning map uh, in terms of uh, various uh, changes that have taken place on a zoning uh, map over the course of the, of the year. Uh, so I would like to um, entertain that in the form of a motion for the uh, a resolution approving the 2014 Village of Beach Park zoning map. So moved. So we have a motion. Second. And a second for uh, resolution number six. Any discussion? Uh, now that your microphone's on, could you just give us a close note of those three changes? What do they amount to? Uh, again, I don't have specific. The Benito property was uh, Eastwood. Uh, it was a lot. These are lot consolidations, actually. The lot consolidation for Benito property. Uh, a lot of consolidates for the Beach Community Church. And I remember actually, that one. Thank you. Yeah, they're actually building a, uh, uh, a new uh, addition to the facility and the Slitch property on North Shore Avenue, which was also a lot of Okay, thank you. And, and there was a, a map amendment on Sheridan Road, uh, which is a change of zoning from B1 to right, R2. Right, yeah. yeah. All right. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Adderson? Aye. Trustee Siddig? Aye. Trustee Wells? Aye. Trustee Gus. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. And Trustee Miller. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next, um, we have a um, conditional use permit uh, for precision, precision roofing uh, for operating a parking lot to tow vehicles at 38401 North Sheridan Road. Uh, the conditional use permit expires uh, March 8th of 2014 with the option of extending this permit for an additional two years. Uh, many of you as board members may recall, uh, we approved this uh, about three years ago. Uh, I think Whitmore Towing uh, is the uh, uh, tenant who's actually uh, towing vehicles there. Uh, and again, at that time, um, not knowing how this was going to work out, uh, the board uh, at that time op opted to uh, come back, bring it back for the board every two years to review it just to see how things were going on. Uh, and uh, we're at that point right now where they're looking to renew it. The 
uh, property owners would like it as well as a tenant. Uh, we've had no complaints. Uh, uh, I think the st uh, staff has indicated, with the exception of one, I do recall that uh, when we initially started it, there was a neighbor in close proximity that uh, was uh, getting acclimated to that uh, new operation. And uh, other than that, I don't know of any complaints that we've had. Uh, is that, uh, would that be a correct assumption, John? Yes. Okay. All right. And with that, uh, again, um, and that the petitioners are Tom and uh, Margie and Pearson enacting the board to extend the condition of use for the additional two years. Um, I'd like to, again, entertain in the form of a motion to consider an ordinance approving an extension to the condition of use permit at 3841 North Sheridan Road. So second. moved. We have a motion and a second. Second. Any discussion? No third. <laughs> okay, roll call, please. Trustee Johnson. All right. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Adderson. Aye. Trustee Siddig. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. And Trustee Gus. Aye. Thank you. What number? What number is this? 11. Thank you. Thanks. You. Next we have a, next item we have for your consideration is uh, at the um, direction of the building committee, uh, looking at a text amendment to allow temporary use permit for vehicle sales within residential districts. Uh, and one of the uh, reasons uh, for this uh, uh, ordinance change or ordinance change or amendment uh, is that we've had a, an ongoing problem, particularly along our major thoroughfares, our business corridors and so forth, uh, where uh, individuals have uh, parked vehicles uh, in the right of way. They've parked them in the yards. Um, again, it's been an ongoing problem. Actually, it's been a revolving door in terms of automobile sales. And it really uh, goes contrary to what we want to do in terms of the village and what we'd like to see. Uh, the Village of Beach Park is working very hard. Our, our staff and committees are working very hard to uh, uh, turn the corner in terms of uh, attracting viable businesses, cleaning up uh, major corridors and so forth. And this is an initiative that we think uh, go a long way to cleaning up and improving the image. So um, again, this will uh, permit, only, uh, permit uh, vehicles only in residential areas at no charge and allowed for 60 days. However, this permit can be renewed. A permit that will be a no charge for residents. Vehicle uh, is defined as a non-commercial automobile and recreational vehicle that is generally the same size or smaller than a pickup truck. Vehicles must be registered or have regist registered within six, the past six months uh, to the address in which it is located for sale. So one of the problems, again, that we've had is that people are bringing, if you got an uh, a desirable uh, location. They were bringing in other individuals' cars and selling them, and they didn't have the proper conditional use permit. So this gives us some control, a mechanism for our staff to have more control over that uh, situation so that we can, again, make sure that uh, if they are going to be selling automobiles, that they have the uh, necessary um, uh, CUP and the necessary zoning uh, that would allow them to conduct the type of operation. And uh, with that, uh, again, I'd like to entertain that, uh, again, in the form of a motion to consider a text amendment approving temporary vehicle sales in residential districts. So moved. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Um, uh, discussion? I think this is really a nice way to, to, to uh, codify the private sale of vehicles. I probably most of us at one time or another had a vehicle that we could probably figure we could sell uh, ourselves and, and make more money on it than, than trade it in. And I think that's we need to recognize that and, and permit that, but yet you want to control the, you don't want, you don't want ad hoc uh, automobile dealerships in residential neighborhoods. So I think this is a great way to do that. The only thing is some people are going to, John's got a good spot to sell his car. Nobody comes down my street. <laughs> so actually, tr actually, trust the uh, not only has been a problem in the residential, but also in some of the commercial areas we've had that problem. So I always thought that actually that our, our former public works site would we should we should rent <laughs> spots out there and make <laughs> some money <laughs> on a weekly. That's basis. a great location. <laughs> yeah, John, you got your hands full. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing else. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right. Uh, we'll roll call, please. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Adderson. Aye. Trustee Siddick. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Gus. Aye. And Trustee Jensen. Aye. And again, that would be ordinance number 12. Motion carries. And next we have, uh, again, uh, an ordinance uh, looking at amending the Village of Peach Park zoning ordinance. 
sections to address amateur radio towers and antennas. Uh, we have had uh, some requests uh, to install ta uh, towers or antennas. The staff has been working on this for, uh, for weeks and months. And again, they've worked uh, tirelessly, uh, Jeremiah, uh, John, and the rest of staff. And the committee has also uh, worked tirelessly on this in terms of uh, reviewing certain uh, requirements such as uh, location, setbacks, colors, uh, the quantity uh, that you can have, uh, wind speeds, which would again uh, be uh, uh, up to 100 miles an hour, it'd have to meet that. And one of the uh, critical things that we thought was important is that they actually have to uh, have a structure engineer. We'd have to have uh, drawings by structure engineers to make sure the structures are, are safe. Uh, they're going to be located in residential areas. Um, staff has uh, had a, a uh, enduring challenge because there's certain statutes uh, at the state level that requires us to allow ham radio operators. Uh, and again, they did all they could to uh, keep us within the, pr uh, to allow those individuals who did want to engage in that type of activity to uh, allow that to, uh, to happen, uh, but also allow us the maximum control. So we're at the, we're at the edge in terms of uh, the ordinance in terms of uh, our ability to control it, but again, they did a good job of putting this together in such a manner that, again, didn't infringe upon the state statutes and the requirements that we were duly required to allow one to uh, to have. As a matter of fact, the ham operator is one of the reasons that it is um, protected is that in an emergency situation, uh, be it a, a terrorist attack or uh, some other uh, unforeseen situation, it might be the only means of communication that the public might have. Uh, to communicate if uh, other communication sources were knocked out. So, um, again, um, I want to thank staff for their efforts and uh, their hard work on this. And with that, I'd like to, uh, again, bring forth this in the form of uh, an ordinance to amend the Village of Beach Park Zoning Ordinance section to address amateur radio towers and antennas. And Second. I'd like to entertain this in the form of a motion. So we have a, your a motion? Second. Painting is for a motion, yeah. Okay, and we have Linda as the second. Okay, this would be ordinance number 13. Uh, any discussion? Yes, a okay. little bit. <laughs> uh, one thing that struck me is I didn't see that there was a, some minimum. We're requiring engineering for any and all amateur radio antennas that are installed, even if it's smaller than your television antenna on your roof. Oh, okay, I missed that. Okay, then that's all. That's the only question I've got. Thank you. Other discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Sittig. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Gust. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. And Trustee Adderson. Aye. Motion carries. You still have more. I still have more. Last but not least. Uh, this is uh, save the best for last. Save the best for last. <laughs> this is uh, an ordinance amending Chapter 6.08 of Title 6, Chapter 9 of Title 17 of the Beach Park Municipal Code. And primarily, what this uh, ordinance would uh, do would allow uh, farm animals, uh, and in particular chickens, in residential zone that met certain criteria. Again, this is uh, something that. Uh, some of our residents have uh, requests. Um, the uh, Planning Commission, they've worked hard on this, uh, as well as staff. Uh, basically what this uh, ordinance would, it would uh, be confined to lots of 20,000 square feet uh, or more, so a half acre would be the minimum lot. We do have provision in our ordinance right now which uh, do allow for uh, chickens. Typically those would be five acre parcels, as with most, most jurisdictions. They would be agricultural zone. So what we're actually doing is reducing that to allow some individuals who uh, want to um, move, gravitate toward more healthier eating. That was uh, as the way it was brought to us in terms of raising their own food. So we're actually uh, making provision to reduce that down to a half acre. Um, lot size would be uh, with, with a minimum of uh, 20,000 square feet would be allowed six hens. Uh, 40,000 square acres would be allowed 10 hens. Um, the ordinance deals with the carrying of hens. It deals with a, a host of different issues. Um, everything from uh, the uh, containment of them to the uh, fence requirements, coop requirements, uh, coop size requirements, uh, coop run requirements, uh, sanitation, uh, the keeping of food, 
uh, breeding. Uh, roosters would not be allowed. Roosters of guineas uh, would not be allowed as part of this ordinance. Uh, but it does cover a whole host of issues that we thought were important uh, and, again, would allow individuals to, uh, again, who met that criteria to be able to raise uh, chickens and, uh, again, harvest the eggs. Um, permit would be required. Permit the annual fee would be $30 uh, for up to 10 chickens. Um, there is a renewable, annual renewable uh, uh, permit. We've also incorporated a section that deals with uh, waivers uh, against the village of Beach Park for any li liability. And we've also uh, included in that um, um, a section that deals with complaints. Because again, any time you get an ordinance like this, uh, again, you, you may be subject to complaints. Uh, so we do uh, allow uh, two complaints or more within a 180-day period uh, or three within, uh, within a calendar year uh, would be subject to review and, and possible revocation. So um, we do have to, we've tried to cover uh, as many bases as we could. Um, so um, again, um, very extensive ordinance. And again, I do want to thank staff for all their hard work. And uh, I'd like to bring this in the form of a ordinance, uh, an ordinance amending, again, Chapter 6.8 of Title 6 of Chapter 9 of um, Title, Title 9, 9 of 17 of Beach Park, Illinois Municipal Code. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Notice that you're not allowed to slaughter the chickens within the site of a right-of-way. Yeah. yeah um, so no kids it, on bikes will see that. Yeah, yeah. You can't shoot them or anything. And you have to slaughter them in a humane way, yeah. which yes. kind of like an oxymoron. <laughs> yes, trustee, that was actually gently, one of the... <laughs> you, you gently killed them. Like jumbo shrimp, right? That was one of the parts of the ordinance that, again, you, can't, you couldn't uh, slaughter the, uh, the uh, hens in public view, so uh, we wanted to be compassionate to people who might be neighboring, neighboring kids and so forth. So I think we've got uh, most of the bases covered. And uh, we, uh, I, I have some experience in this area um, from many years ago over, I uh, had, had a family friend over on Ford Avenue and we had a chicken coop and we had a hundred chickens and seven turkeys. In, uh, on Ford Avenue, so you know the lats aren't that big there. <laughs> I will say that the roosters went first. Um, <laughs> as soon as they started getting noisy, we had a lot of chicken for the pot. Um, but we, we raised the, the hens and had the eggs, and um, there's a lot of predators around our community, and people will learn quickly that if you don't take care of your hens, the raccoons and the weasels and whatever else is running around will. But um, Coyotes, this, coyotes. Um, but I, I think I have to say in, in my term as mayor I've received more letters right. and phone calls from people asking for us to uh, allow this in the village than anything else that we've done so I guess it's a, a, a an item whose time has come so if there's no other discussion. Well, I have a question, oh, actually, sure. um, of Trustee Wells. So if there, you raised the point about complaints. If there are complaints, will the code enforcement officer, how is that validated? Yes, code enforcement officer as well as uh, staff uh, would also review uh, the complaint, nature of the complaint, and also they would, uh, there's an option in there for revocation of the license if, in fact, the uh, complaints are such that it warrants it. Mm -hmm. They would re review it on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So would they be subject to the adjudication process that we have here? Yeah. Potentially. Potentially. Yeah. Like any code violation. Uh, like any. Yeah. Okay. It'd be an ordinance violation ticket, and you know, it's it's the repetitive nature of the complaint mm -hmm. that's going to get them to lose their license for raising chickens. And okay. And I just want to say one other, just quick thing. Uh, there was some requests for smaller, uh, smaller lots, but one of the things that uh, we as a board have to understand is that uh, every time we implement a new ordinance or a new regulation, that, that means more enforcement, that means more staff time. So as we, as we pondered the issue, uh, we took that in consideration that we have very limited staff that stretch pretty thin right now. Uh, so we want to make sure, again, that we didn't uh, uh, overwhelm our staff with, uh, um, with the much smaller lots because of potential complaints and so forth. So I uh, just wanted to make you aware of that. All right. So. Please call the roll. Trustee Wells. Aye. 
Trustee Dusk. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. <coughs> Trustee Pardon. Miller. Aye. Trustee Adderson. Aye. And Trustee Siddig. Aye. <coughs> Let there be chickens. The motion carries. 14 or 15? 14. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much. All right. And that concludes my report, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, uh, TIF committee has no report tonight. The next TIF meeting is scheduled for the um, first board meeting night in April, and uh, it's to be determined whether that meeting will be held and uh, lacking agenda items. Uh, Public Works, Trustee Otterson. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first item, uh, well, actually, the first two items, if you'll recall, um, we tried this last year and, and uh, decided to do it again this year. Uh, taking advantage of some services available through the uh, Illinois or the Lake County Municipal League, um, like a joint purchase or a bulk purchase uh, program. And we did it last year with the crack ceiling of the pavement, and it worked very well. We got a, a way lower rate than we would have if we would have been, you know, petitioning for proposals on our own. So the two things that we agreed to utilize this year was crack ceiling and then some pavement marking. Uh, straight painting and whatnot. So the first, the first one on there is is under the uh, the uh, crack ceiling. Uh, the outfit that got the bid for the county at large, or for you know for the group at large, was Beam Pavement Maintenance Incorporated. That's who got the bid last year, and everybody was happy with them. So do, are we signing a contract with Beam, right? our portion of the contract. So the motion would be to approve a contract with Beam Pavement Maintenance in a dollar amount of $13,505.40 for crack ceiling. So moved. Motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Gus. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Adderson. Aye. Trustee Siddig. Aye. And Trustee Wells. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. The, the second item, like I said, is, is for uh, pavement marking or, or striping. Uh, the company that got the bid through the Municipal League was Superior Road Striping, Inc. We have recently had experience with them on Beach Road. They're the ones that uh, got the contract through that, that uh, program, and everybody was happy with them, so we thought that was a good thing. So I would make a motion that we approve a contract with Superior Road Striping, uh, for our portion of the uh, Municipal League contract of $4,500. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Adderson. Aye. Trustee Siddig. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. And Trustee Gus. Aye. Motion carries. And I might add that uh, this is a fine example of uh, municipalities working together to everyone's benefit. And... Uh, Appreciate the uh, Lake County Municipal League coordinating this and, and uh, making this available to all of us. Thank you. Okay, and the third item uh, is another thing that we we did once before, and it's something that's required to be done on an annual basis. It's a, uh, a resolution for reimbursement. Um, the thing that we specifically were talking about with this was the, uh, the work that goes into the uh, SSA projects, um, the legal fees, the engineering, things like that, if we have this ordinance um, in place that allows us to charge the fees that we incur to the, the project, to the SSAs, uh, in, in a sense reimbursing us for the money we put out up front. Um, so with, if I've done a good enough job explaining it, so I would make a motion that we can uh, consider the reimbursement resolution for 2014. Second. A motion and a second, and, and uh, for clarification, that is titled a resolution expressing official intent regarding certain capital expenditures to be reimbursed from proceeds of an obligation. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Adderson. Aye. Trustee Siddig. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. And Trustee Ghost. Number seven. No. Aye. Oh, okay. And Trustee Johnson. Aye. Okay. Number seven. Thank you. <laughs> Motion carries. Okay, and that uh, concludes the public works report. Thank you very much. Uh, and item number seven, Finance Committee, Trustee Jensen. Uh, we had a, uh, a well-attended meeting uh, earlier this evening. All the board members came, and uh, none of the public, however, were always invited. <laughs> the door to was come. open. 
All was open. Yeah, the door was open. Uh, we reviewed the, uh, the the proposed budget for the next fiscal year. Uh, that budget, our finance director will be um, preparing that for publication, and the tentative schedule is to uh, have a hearing in advance of or in conjunction with our meeting on April 10th. So be sure to mark your calendars for that. Um, and our next finance committee meeting is up in the air. We're targeting the week of... Uh, of April 15th, uh, tax day week, <laughs> sometime during that week. So that will be on the village calendar once we settle on a date. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, item 8, Public Safety Trustee Siddick. Thank you. I just have uh, an FYI uh, coming up. We have the spring pet vaccination clinic at the Public Works facility uh, Saturday uh, that will be running from 9 to noon. And as a reminder, this is a cash-only service, uh, so be sure that you have that on hand, as well as uh, we ask that you please pick up after your pets. That's all.